Welcome to another episode of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner, and today is April 19th, 2018. As we push into spring here, we do still have some active weather across the southeast especially. Uh, we're going to head right into that in just a moment, but don't forget you can always get our information by going to 1-800-472-0391 or head to their webpage by going to weather.gov forward slash Alaska and click on to the areas that you're interested in. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to e email. Our TV lead is at david.snyder at noaa.gov. And you can find that off of any of our websites going through the TV links. Let's start off our day to, uh, with looking at the uh, spring flood potential, which is going to be created every couple of days. This one was created on April 17, 2018. Uh, you can see the areas in red are areas that are above average uh, expected to have for the snow melt potential and runoff and the bel below average locations are highlighted in green. So looking at areas in green across much of the south and southeastern areas with that area across the eastern Copper River Basin also being in the above potential. Now let's take a look at uh, the storm systems across the area today. We, we're going to focus on first the storm system across the northern areas of the Gulf. You can see that lifted well into the north this afternoon and that is bringing quite a bit of rain across the southeast today. We saw uh, totals between a quarter to one third of an inch on average for populated areas around Juneau. However, the southern areas near Ketchikan and uh, towards Craig, we saw upwards of one inch to two and a half inches reported at Craig. Now we do have some heavier rainfall moving over into Yakutat this afternoon as this low pressure curls around to the to the east. So we'll just put this into motion one more time and you can see the drawing behind the system as it pulls to the north and main um, activity is around the low core center there. Now across the north, mainly just a high pressure off the northwest coast, low pressure to the northeast, and that's bringing a weak front across the northern tier of the state. While across the western areas, it's kind of quiet, but we do have this low spinning ahead of a secondary low pressure system that's moving towards Shimia. So we've got two low pressure systems out here uh, to be monitoring for the next few days. The first focus is going to be around this low pressure system that's approaching the Alaska Peninsula or centered over the Alaska Peninsula this afternoon. So here's the associated low pressure system. It's a 987 millibar low. Doesn't look terribly impressive right now, but it's going to be um, getting caught in the upstream motion of the upper level trough that's uh, going to be pushing this low pressure system and it's going to develop a little bit better towards the end of the week. Now the current low pressure system across the southeast is um, pushed a front across the eastern Copper River area. They're just now starting to see some precipitation move in during the afternoon hours. Up to the north, uh, the ridging off to the northwest is kind of squeezing the gradient here just off the northwest coast and this has bring some gustier conditions across the Bering Strait uh, between the low pressure to the south and the higher pressure to the north. We've got a cold air mass that's kind of sagging to the south here, an easterly flow across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, gusting pretty good too this afternoon uh, with some light snow activity along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And then across the western areas of the state, some light snow, light rain showers are occurring around the low pressure system all the way back to the Alaska Peninsula actually and then some low clouds and some patchy fog between this system and the approaching low pressure system that's just moving south of the western Aleutian chain this afternoon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what's going to happen tonight. Uh, we're expecting this low pressure system at the surface to 
begin to push inland uh, over the Sitna Valley, and that's going to be weakening as it moves inland and just bring a very broad boundary across the eastern tier of the state. So some light snow shower activity, no high um, totals are really expected across areas inland up through Fairbanks, and light snow shower activity will continue across the northeastern areas of the state as well. Gusty flow will occur on the backside uh, of this trough at the surface here um, towards the Seward Peninsula uh, with the cold air mass also pushing in across that Bering Strait. Now the low pressure system across the southern areas of, of um, the Bering is really going to stay on the south side of the central Aleutian chain for the overnight hours. Now this low pressure system is going to continue to weaken as we head into Friday, become less defined. So shower activity will continue as this broad troughing encompasses the southern areas of the state, um, keeping that uh, light activity across the southeast. Uh, forgot to mention that this southeastern location will see some strong gusts between 40 to 45 miles per hour during the uh, overnight hours out of the southeast location. But as we head into your Friday, that wind is going to be tapering off, um, although the rain is going to continue those showers. Now those showers are going to be pulled further inland, possibly making it um, into the Susitna and Matanuska Valleys, but the precipitation would be light and any rain crossing over the mountains is going to be uh, difficult to get any accumulations and also for the southwest. Now mainly a drier pattern across the northwest and western areas, but more that east to north east flow uh, between that squeeze pressure gradient. So the pattern is not going to change a whole lot on Friday. So what you're seeing today uh, is going to continue tomorrow. Lots of clouds across the south um, areas of the state with clouds extending all the way across the bearing locations. This low pressure system is going to be keeping the rain around the center of the core. So Overall, should stay dry, cloudy, and fog across the bearing through your Saturday forecast, with a slow beginning to take that northward track towards Kodiak and the Alaska Peninsula as we head into the weekend. This will also see an increase of southeasterly flow on uh, the north side of this front here as it pulls to the north. And then to the north of this system, we still have that troughing across the area, so continue shower possibilities, uh, especially for the northeastern Gulf locations. All areas along the Gulf will continue to see this rainfall activity. However, we do have a stronger easterly flow uh, coming into the Prince William Sound, so downsloping will occur on the lee side of the mountains, limiting uh, precipitation amounts inland. For the southeast, we'll continue to see some precipitation through your Saturday uh, with the trough just extending across the north coast. However, that activity is going to be lighter than what we've experienced in the last 24 hours. For the northern coast, we're expecting that dry condition to continue with just a weak troughing along the northeast with a ridge to the west. Uh, the wind should be tapering down for at least the north coast for your Saturday. However, a colder air mass is going to be staying in place. Now we'll get to that in just a moment. One last mention for the, the Gulf waters. They're going to be in the wettest areas as we head into the first half of the weekend as that low pressure system approaches the Alaska Peninsula. Peninsula. So look for cloudy, wet, windy conditions around the low center pushing towards the Alaska Peninsula and the western areas of the Gulf. Now let's look at your temperatures for Friday morning. We're going to see uh, fa fairly uh, warm temperatures protected with all the cloud cover across the southeast, which is in the upper 30s for the overnight hours, a little bit cooler across south and southwestern locations of the state as uh, just cooler air mass in place, keeping it ranging between um, the low to mid 30s across the northern tier of the state. Very um, big difference there with temperatures below zero as that cold air mass drops in from the eastern boat for its sea coast and also um, across the northwestern areas of the state. So looking for a transitional area around the Seward Peninsula in the teens with the western areas of the state being a little bit colder in the low 30s with 30s across the northern tier of the Bering and the Aleutian areas will see temperatures ranging in the mid-30s. 
looking at your Friday afternoon forecast, warming up very much the same as we saw today with temperatures reaching up into the low to mid 40s through the Aleutian chain. Cold temperatures um, only raising up to the single digits, uh, mainly in the 20s just south of the Brooks Range into the central locations of the state, slightly warmer in the mid 30s. Now across the southeast locations, warming trends will be into the upper 40s um, back towards the uh, Kenai expect into the mid 40s as well. Uh, areas across the Copper River Basin, we do have some snow in there for your forecast, so a uh, few areas will see temperatures in the lower 30s, upper 20s, at least during the late morning hours, and then should warm up slightly in the afternoon, giving a mix of rain and snow. So for um, overnight, Friday night into Saturday morning, temperatures will fall back below that freezing mark, so that trough in the area will be bringing snow to a lot of the areas across the Copper River and along the Alaska Range primarily. Now the southeast will be back down into the upper 30s with areas across the western areas of the Gulf uh, dropping down into the mid 30s. And then we'll see that transition into the 20s across the interior with temperatures once again um, below zero with temperatures significantly colder on Saturday morning for the no northeastern Beaufort Seacoast with temperatures ranging 10 to 20 degrees below zero below zero. Now for the Seward Peninsula, a little bit cooler there in the lower teens for your Saturday morning. With the southwest slightly cooler, temperatures are going to be closer to the freezing mark and just below for much of the southwest. Uh, so that colder air mass is essentially going to be traversing the state all the way into the eastern bearing, dropping that colder air down towards the Alaska Peninsula and even the eastern Aleutians as we head into the weekend. So that's primarily the difference that's happening in the next several days is the transport of that cold air towards the southern areas of the Bering, which keeps the temperatures a little bit cooler as you head into this sat Saturday afternoon uh, range. You're going to see those colder temperatures reflected without te temperatures reaching into the 40s across much of the western areas of the state. Um, basically going to see the same trends in the single digits across the north coast. Interior locations uh, will creep up into the lower 40s as you head towards the Copper River Basin with the warmest temperatures across the southeast. And <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment with your aviation. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather for your Friday morning, you can see across the northern tier of the state, we will see some MVFR and IFR conditions to start off the day across the eastern areas of the state as well, all the way down towards the northeast Gulf Coast. And that's still going to linger across parts of the southeast. Now look for patchy MVFR conditions across the Gulf with IFR and MVFR conditions widespread there across the western areas of the Bering and some um, isolated conditions there across the central and southern areas of the Bering. Now let's take a look at the afternoon. We'll still see um, an increase now for MVFR and IFR conditions across the Bering. However, it will decrease across the northern Brooks Range and across the central and southern tier of the state we will see that MVFR and IFR condition on the increase. Patchy conditions will exist across the Gulf waters and we'll see some IFR conditions moving into the southern, um, southeastern areas of the panhandle there. So looking at the following day for your Saturday morning, we'll see IFR and MVFR conditions uh, creep back into the north of the Brooks Range up to the coast. And we'll also see more of a widespread IFR condition across the Gulf Coast in the southeast, the Panhandle locations, and back over towards the western Kenai, I'm sorry, eastern Kenai. A little bit of a break there with just MVFR across the east, western Kenai. And then we'll see IFR and MVFR across much of the central interior down through the southwestern areas of the state. Across the Bering locations, um, across the Aleutian chain, and Alaska Peninsula, look for widespread IFR conditions for your Saturday morning. And then as we head into the afternoon, some improvement across um, the Alaska Peninsula and then better improvement to MVFR conditions at least across much of the Bering IFR still out there in the western waters, however. Looking at your Gulf locations, widespread MVFR conditions around coastal locations with the IFR conditions widespread across the western Gulf and along the coastal locations. To the north, we should see some improvement with MVFR conditions just south of the Brooks Range. 
Let's take a look at your passes in more depth now. We have anatovic pass, which should be MVFR going to VFR later in the day. And Adigan will follow suit with MVFR going to VFR. And look for Lake Clark and Merrill pass uh, possibly being uh, at VFR for most of the day. And then we'll also see rainy pass go to VFR. And we'll have windy and VFR to IFR late day. And Isabel pass will be MVFR. And for Mentasta will be MVFR. And Tanita will go MVFR to IFR late day. And then we'll move on to Portage. We'll start out MVFR going to IFR. And Chilku and White Pass will be MVFR conditions all day. Let's take a look at your freezing levels. The surface will be draped across the panhandle and along the southern tier of the state, and then on across the central and northern areas of the bearing. 2,000 foot level there uh, wedged across the southwest up through the northern bearing. Otherwise, heights climb just south of the Aleutian chain, and also heights climb just along uh, the panhandle towards the Dixon entrance, two to 4,000 feet. Your icing conditions for tomorrow, main concern will be below 2,000 feet um, to the north. So across the southern areas of the state, a little bit more widespread there um, into the Panhandle and northern Gulf below 6,000 with some uh, considerable moderate conditions along the eastern border. Looking out to the west below 6,000 feet, mainly along the central Aleutians as that low pressure system creeps up from the south. And let's take a look at the jet stream. So. Uh, on your jet stream today, we basically have a very amplified pattern uh, across the, the northern stream and a little bit lighter speeds than the main jet stream that's located to the south. A uh, large troughing encompasses much of the state. So at your 9,000 foot level, we have the low that's going to be centering uh, just south of the Seward Peninsula here. And we're going to see a change of wind direction around this low pressure system with some speed maxes across the north and northwestern tier of the state out of the northeast direction. And then that flow is going to continue across the bearing with some weak embedded lows in the upper level flow. And then let's take a look at the Gulf. We'll see a very large stream of southeasterly fetch coming up into the panhandle and the southern tier of the state mainly between 15 to 30 miles per hour as you head towards the Kenai Peninsula, a little bit higher speeds towards the Dixon entrance with a speed max coming up to 40 knots. Let's take a look. Uh, 3,000 foot winds are very similar with that low planted there to the west and to the east, so watch out for those speed maxes around the low centers. So main concerns are going to be across the northern and northern tier of the state and the central Aleutians. <music>
Megrez is 58 light years away, which means that when we look at Megrez, we see it as it actually existed 58 years ago, back in 1960. That was the year David Duchovny, Agent Mulder from the TV show X-Files, was born. Alioth, the first star in the handle of the Big Dipper, and Fecta, a star at the base of the spoon, are both about 83 light years away. So, when we look at Alioth and Fecta tonight, we see the light that left those stars in 1935, three years before our favorite stargazer, Jack Horkheimer, was born. Mizar, the star at the bend of the Big Dipper's handle, is 78 light years away, which means that when we look at Mizar, we see it as it actually existed 78 years ago, back in 1940, the same year that Patrick Stewart, Star Trek Captain Jean-Luc Picard, was born. Indeed, and that's not all. The last star in the handle, Alcade, is so far away that the light that left it began its journey 104 years ago in 1914, the same year the Panama Canal opened. The last two stars are the pointer stars, Merak and Dubé. If you connect a line from Merak to Dubé and keep going, it will point you to the North Star. Merak is 80 light years from Earth, but Dubé, the one closer to the North Star, is a whopping 123 light years from us. Yep, the light you see from Dubé left it in 1895, and what happened in 1895, you might ask? Well, Catherine Lee Bates wrote the song, America the Beautiful. Looking at the stars of the Big Dipper can really make you feel like a time traveler. So in 2053, we'll get to see the light that left Mizar the year I was born. And by my calculations, James, you'll be, what, 86 that year? Yep. I'll be getting ready for Halley's Comet to return in about eight more years. Yeah, the year 2061 <laughs> will be here in no time, cosmically speaking. So, next time you look up at the Big Dipper, remind yourself, if you're still young, that someday you'll see these stars as they actually existed when you first appeared on this planet. And if you're not so young, delight in the thought that you are looking back at some of the few things that appear exactly as they were in those sunlit days and star-filled nights of youth. Happy stargazing. And happy time traveling. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Okay, now on to the marine segment of the show. We're going to take a look at the ice edge. If you take a look at these areas that are in lighter blue, this is where we have a lot of open water. Actually, areas uh, across the Norton Sound is quite open. Uh, the areas from St. Lawrence Island and north, there is a little bit more ice in this area, but concentrations are much lower in the other areas that are blue around um, down towards the Kuskokwim Delta, and we're expecting uh, any movement with the ice to be on a southwest direction as the flow remains from the northeast during the next few days, and we'll continue to see quick melting of the ice edge. Now let's take a look at the southeast forecast. As we head into Friday, winds are going to be much light, lighter, um, as we mentioned earlier, out of the south direction between 10 to 20 knots. And through the inner channels, expect waves between two to six feet. Highest um, seas are going to be to the south there, outer waters between 9 and 11 feet. Now let's take a look at your Saturday forecast. Winds will be back up um, to 20 to 25 knots across the outer waters, uh, more of a southeasterly direction across the inner channels at 15 knots. Seas on Saturday for the inner channels will be about three feet and the outer waters between eight to 10 feet. Now heading across the north and western areas of the Gulf, expecting a south to southwesterly flow in this direction for your Friday and looking at uh, on your Cook Inlet locations, a small craft advisory there out of the south direction. And seas on this day will be between six to eight feet across the Gulf waters and then across the Cook Inlet between four to six feet and then across Prince William Sound four feet. For your Saturday forecast, looking at small craft for um, the Prince William Sound at 30 knots out of the east and more of a southeasterly flow across the rest of the area. Uh, across the 
Cook Inlet, though we do see more of an easterly flow like Prince William Sound. And then we'll see seas on this day between five to seven feet, pretty much across the area, except uh, for the northern inlet locations, three, three feet. And then across the Alaska Peninsula on your Friday, expect lighter flow uh, west to southwest direction across the area, and four to six foot seas across the Bering side, and eight to 10 feet across uh, the Pacific side, with um, four foot seas for the Shalikov Strait. Now for your Saturday, expect your winds to increase as well. Uh, more of a southeasterly direction, becoming more of a northeasterly direction towards the Alaska Peninsula, looking at seas across the Bering three feet and then between five to eight feet across the Pacific side. Now looking at your Aleutian chain as we head into your Friday, lighter speeds on this day, and we're gonna be seeing more of a 15 to 20 knot range, except just south of the Eastern Aleutians there, 25 knot small craft advisory tour Towards the central Aleutians with that next low coming up you get a little change of direction there as well. Now for your seas on this day mainly between 5 to 10 feet and then as we head into your Saturday forecast a little bit stronger wind picking up there in the western Aleutian chain with mainly a northerly flow across the eastern Aleutians between 15 to 20 knots and seas on this day a little bit higher 12 to 13 feet across the Pacific side and then 5 to 9 feet across the Bering side. Looking at your Friday forecast for the West Coast, more of a northerly flow on this day with small craft advisory uh, to the north there. And then we'll see a change of wind direction towards the Pribilof Islands out of the south, a little bit lighter wind speeds. And then for your Saturday forecast, uh, more uniform flow on this day, a little bit higher speeds between 20 to 30 knots, small craft across most of the area. And seas will be between 5 to 10 feet. And then for your west coast, north and west coast, more of a northeasterly flow becoming north across the Bering Strait. Uh, small crafts or brisk winds to the north there, seven foot seas uh, through the strait uh, where there's ice-free waters. And then as we head into your Saturday forecast, wind direction change across the eastern boat for sea coast out of the west to southwest directions, keeping that northeast direction across the western to the Bering Strait location, small craft as you head to the south there with nine foot seas. Let's take a look at a recap of your forecast as we head into tonight. We have low pressure that's lifting north from the Gulf. We'll see uh, continued rain conditions across the southeast back towards the Prince William Sound, mainly um, staying coastal with a few showers being pulled inland with snow from the eastern Copper River uh, back towards the Matanuska across the across the interior locations, snow dropping down from the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and gustier winds across the northwestern um, areas of the state. Not much pattern change into your Friday. Low pressure continues to spin, keeping showers in the forecast. Low pressure system is going to be one to watch coming up from the North Pacific. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>